from the unknown to the known. Yo guys, what's up? It's the Schiller here. We are back doing another video. We're gonna be covering Root Future First, all the happenings, just some kind of general overview of things because a lot has changed. Covering a little bit about ASM, a little bit about Silo, what's going on with Gear and Labs, an upcoming launch on Root and Tattoo World. Talking about some of the things that have launched in general, whole bunch of stuff, and uh, yeah, that's um, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hell yeah, Brewie. Now, if you find this video valuable in any sort of the way, just to uh, let you know, I do do a live stream every single day, Monday through Friday, called XFee to go over the thoughts that you have on the timeline, covering kind of the broad Web3 markets and mentioning Futureverse and Root whenever something happens as well. So we'd love for you guys to come through and see those live streams. Otherwise, I do do an RWA podcast, Real World Assets, called RWA Segments. And if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave a description yeah, I'll leave a description, you idiot. Okay, let's get into everything Futureverse and the Root Network. So to kick things off, we're going to talk about Gear and Labs, who secured funding from the XRP Ledger, Japan, and Korea Fund. And this is something that's relatively new, but it's also backed by Ripple. So Gear and Labs has two different things going on with this, one being the Gear and Wallet, which it's a wallet in crypto that's going to be used for people that are accessing the XRPL. Obviously, people that are using Root, you know, you get to jump on board with that. But the other portion of what they're doing is Lotus Protocol. And this is creating a DeFi ecosystem centered around the XRPL with their first connection being the Root Network. Now, what's rather significant about this is this is the first liquid staking platform that's getting connected to the XRPL. And as I just mentioned, it's gonna be the first thing connected to the root network. And we know that the root networks to supercharge everything that's going on within XRP. So I wanna now show you a quick little clip from Crypto Erie with Rox from Gearin Labs. And this is a quick clip from their interview. Rox, with all the chains that are in the blockchain space, why are you focusing on the XRP ledger? XRPL and XRP, due to the liquidity community, the fast uh, transaction speed and the low transaction cost, uh, we are starting out on XRPL and then moving on to the root network, which has smart contract compatibilities. And that's why we're starting out with Gear and Wallet uh, with XRPL. And then we have a bridging feature to the root network and we're building Lotus Protocol on the root network your liquid staking solution with the Lotus protocol is going to be, I think, the first liquid staking DeFi solution integrated with XRP Ledger. So I, I, I think it's important for everyone to understand what is liquid staking. In traditional staking, you lock up your cryptocurrency, for example, root on the root network to earn rewards as a user but you can't use it for trading during this time. But liquid staking actually allows you to stake your assets and still use them after that. So when you stake with the liquid staking protocol, you receive a tokenized version of your staked assets. So when you stake root, you get S root from us. And then these tokens can be traded or used for other DeFi activity activities, offering more flexibility for the users. Here's a quick peek at some stats around the Root Network. Token Relations put out an email every about 14 days or so, and so this is a 14-day comparison. But yeah, 326 million Root staked. Will be cool to look back on this a few years down the line of what the uh, network looked like in the early days. And if you are signing up for Token Relations, just a note, they give you notifications for every single chain they're partnered with. So if you do sign up, make sure to go and then change your personalized preferences or you will rage like I did and then realized it. Let's talk a little bit about prisms and surreal scapes, which are assets for the upcoming The Third Kingdom strategy simulation game that seems like it's going to be kind of low key. So if you are somebody of strategy, you have time to uh, play a different type of game like that. This one might be very interesting. Now, what makes it more interesting is the fact that Futureverse also put out a paper called The Material World. And essentially, 
the super, super TLDR version of it is if you think of a video game, you have different assets, resources, and whatnot within a game. So for old school RuneScape, let's use that as an example. If you uh, want to buy wood, if somebody had to have wood chopped that wood, if you want to buy different ores, somebody would have had to mine it. But what if the base ecosystem of what those resources were, were able to be used amongst a slew of other games. So there's some kind of talk and speculation of the fact that these resources mined from the Third Kingdom are going to be used in multiple other games, including the Readyverse, which of course is the Ready Player One metaverse as part of a Futureverse, and they're doing this whole big bang. We'll get to that in a little bit, but there is kind of a lot to go through, but let's just give you a quick look at what the game kind of feels like and what some of the land looks like. So with the prisms, the NFTs you can throw on the land itself, they do go away. So they are deflationary, which is kind of cool. And you get to unlock different resources, which we'll see once the game starts. Taking a quick look at Tradeverse, you can see the Prism, $60,000 being sold so far for them, but for the Surrealscapes, about $35,000. Huge shout out to Tradeverse, it's been awesome trading root NFTs on it, but when you go and check out the Surrealscapes, you'll be able to see that there are several different biomes relating to different questions, or relating to different collections. So uh, Cool Cats, Deadfellas, Pudgy Penguins, they're all a part of this, with the rarest of all of these lands being the ones that are the Shroom Field. So uh, waiting to see how much extra resources, how many different things are from one land to another. Do you need Fluffs? Do you need a Doodle? Do you need a Pudgy Penguin? What's all the special insights? That is the question, but very excited to play the game, which we're expecting to be out soon. Now, Tradeverse has only been out for about a month, which is kind of neat. But with that said, let's take a quick look at some of the statistics from that 1,750 peak daily unique visitors. Sheesh! Really cool to see the stats, but of course, paying attention to just what a newer network looks like in terms of the NFT action, the traction, et cetera, et cetera. So seeing that there is about 122,000 in secondary volume so far, curious to see where the Tradeverse goes over the next year. There's two different decentralized exchanges that are connected with Root right now, one of them being Dexter and the other one being Moai. This is a current look at the liquidity pools on Moai between Dexter and Moai. Just be super cautious, be looking, try to compare, go on Uniswap, see what the rates are in terms of is there enough liquidity for certain trades because sometimes one platform has it better than another. But as time progresses, I think both of them will flush out a little bit more and there's never going to be a question about the liquidity, but be sure to look at the estimated amounts because you don't want to get screwed. One thing I noticed is that Dexter used to say earn coming soon on the bottom right, but now it says bridge, so I'm not sure if the earning portion potentially is now gone. 
All right, it's silo time. Absolutely love the rebrand of their website here. As you just scroll with the mouse, it gives you a whole bunch of different aspects to it. And then on the bottom, it's cut off a little bit, but it says Silo has evolved from a communications protocol to be so much more. Silo is now an infrastructure layer for data, powering interoperability for assets and users throughout the open metaverse. So then if you go over and look at the roadmap, there's been a couple of things that have already been completed, but I am very intrigued by all of the things that are powered by the Silo token that's coming up. We have the Seekers part swap. That's nothing to do with the token, but that is coming soon. And for the token itself, all these things are powered by the silo token and why I've been paying attention to it. So launch metaverse notifications, incentivize asset register, launch silo graph and launch silo oracles. So those are four different things that use the token. Let's hear an extra little tidbit from Aaron McDonald when he was on down the rabbit hole from a question with Bildo. Like what you foresee, I mean, I know you can't speak on details and we've seen little things um, with the mints and um, trade verse and listing fees going to kind of drive network activity um, mm. but nothing kind of compared to what we saw originally with like the four million fifa getting minted so mm -hmm. like how i guess how do we see or like even something like with silo i think a lot of transaction fees are easy to comprehend in root um because we've seen them but like how does something like silo drive into that like root network activity or asto or will we see more of that through like the paper i guess um so there's there is a connect connected tissue between what we've outlined in the asm paper and what um we're building with silo um if you think about silo being the data infrastructure layer and then asm being the data that sits on top of it that's kind of how they interact um, and so when Muma Matrix gets cranking, that will drive a lot of transactional activity into um, the silo network. Um, and that's, you know, that's yet to be rolled out, um, but something we'll share more detail on next month as part of the post Substrate 1 upgrade roadmap. Um, in terms of network architecture going forward. There's also some pretty exciting, I think, interesting things um interesting and exciting things on the um on the kind of front end social graph um social experience side of things that we've been working on for silo that will bring in some really big co communities um to to bootstrap that um that social graph infrastructure as well so to, some really cool things coming out for silo um and and it is kind of the thread between you know, all of the things that I've outlined in both the ASM paper and in that article on X about um, how we maintain this persistent um, data state that applications and experiences and clients can hook into to um, to produce this the impression of one giant world um, because that data lives in, in silo infrastructure. Is AI dead? That's the narrative right now. Absolutely insane to think so. AI X blockchain, everybody be talking about it, but there's three things that we're going to go over here specifically today. The ASM non-fungible intelligence protocol, the ASM launchpad protocol, and the ASM void protocol 2.0. Those are three of the things that were released with the recent ASM kind of updated paper, explaining some different things, making some pivots along the way, and also giving some awesome explanations of it. I do have a live stream. If you guys are wanting to go check that out, I will try to remember to link a card for that or put it in the description below. But if you go scroll through my live streams, we did do a whole thing where we looked over the paper in like a first go, giving initial reactions with everybody. It was awesome. Thank you so much if you guys were there live. So let's talk about the ASM non-fungible intelligence protocol. Now, this is a development that allows users to mint intelligent NFTs and SFTs, so non-fungible tokens and semi-fungible tokens that are referred to as brains. So B-R-A-I-N-S. It's all with dots in the middle of it. But you're going to be paying in Asto, and creators can embed intelligent metadata into their digital assets, transforming them into dynamic 
interactive entities. So what does that mean? Well, they're interactive, they can use, you stick AI into something, what the hell can it do when you stick the AI into it? How does that exactly work? Well, there is a genome matrix and a murmur card. Now, from my understanding, the murmur card is something that every asset that gets minted is given, and it's kind of like a description, so the other intelligence can understand what that is, which is kind of crazy, but enables them to learn and evolve based on their interactions within the metaverse. So there's actually some kind of a memory attached to it. This protocol simplifies the creation and scaling of intelligent agents, making it easier for developers to integrate advanced AI capabilities into their projects. So next up is the ASM Launchpad protocol. It's designed to foster innovation and protect intellectual property within the ASM ecosystem. They offer tokenized licenses, and the protocol provides developers with access to ASM's extensive patent portfolio. This ensures the projects can lever ASM's technologies while benefiting from legal protection, which in the Web3 space, that's talked about a lot. The Launchpad protocol also supports cross-chain innovations, allowing developers to reach new users and expand their projects across different blockchain environments. And it's looking like this is going to be a vital tool for anyone trying to build at the intersection of Web3 and AI. And then finally, we'll mention the ASM Void Protocol 2.0. So this is kind of the evolution of ASTO staking, which is the token for ASM, and the reward mechanisms. So ASTO holders can stake their tokens to generate ASTO energy, which can then be used to claim rewards from the protocol. This includes fees collected from the non-fungible intelligence protocol, ensuring that participants in the ASM ecosystem are rewarded for their contributions. The Void Protocol 2.0 also facilitates the trading and redemption of Void tokens, adding liquidity and value to the ASM network. This protocol enhances the overall sustainability and growth of the ASM ecosystem by incentivizing active participation and supporting new projects. So it sounds like if you're wanting to come on and use some of the ASM technology, they'll actually be there to help support and promote you. All right, I'm going to level with you. There's a whole whack ton of stuff regarding Futureverse still to come. We're waiting on different announcements and whatnot. I do want to mention as well that the Fluff third birthday has happened and they are now giving away like 10 Fluffs, 350 thousand root token some insane things the link for that i will uh highlight i guess on the screen here momentarily so if you guys are wanting to go check that out be sure to see the fluff world twitter account to enter that there's like 23 different ways of entering for that the prizes are absolutely juice but know that we are going to be covering a whole lot more we haven't gone over gen we haven't gone over the recent arcadia pork jet uh what am i missing off the top of my head tattoo world that's an upcoming launch very excited to see what that is listen if you're all tatted up you get to now do that in the metaverse Hell yeah. The DRX merch is coming up as well. So I'll probably maybe launch another video tomorrow or the day after. We'll see. But just wanted to give you kind of a quick uh, update. And yeah, that's about it. So I could stop the video right now or wait a little bit longer to have more of an awkward ending. But it's really only awkward if you think that it's awkward and you wish the video would stop. At any point, you can hit the back button because you're on a device that you're in control of. And yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next time. Peace.